Hello and welcome to the weekly message here at World Gospel Mission Church. As always, let us begin with the meditation of the week from Psalm 91. He that dwelleth in the sacred place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with His feathers and under His wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation, there shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder, the young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet. Because he hath set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Today's main text comes from Song of Solomon, chapter 4, verse 6 through 15. Until the day break and the shadows flee away, I will get me to the mountain of myrrh and to the hill of frankincense. Thou art all fair, my love. There is no spot in thee. Come with me from Lebanon, my spouse, with me from Lebanon. Look from the top of Amana, from the top of Shinir and Hermon, from the lion's dens, from the mountains of the leopards. Thou hast ravished my heart, my sister, my spouse. Thou hast ravished my heart with one of thine eyes, with one chain of thy neck. How fair is thy love, my sister, my spouse. How much better is thy love than wine, and the smell of thine ointments than all spices. Thy lips, O my spouse, drop as the honeycomb. Honey and milk are under thy tongue, and the smell of thy garments is like the smell of Lebanon. A garden enclosed is my sister, my spouse, a spring shut up, a fountain sealed. Thy plants are an orchard of pomegranates with pleasant fruits, camphor with spikenard, spikenard and saffron, calamus and cinnamon with all trees of frankincense mirror and aloes, with all the chief spices, a fountain of gardens, a, wa a well of living waters, and streams from Lebanon. Let us pray. Lord, grant us the understanding of your scripture through the power of the Holy Ghost. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. When God created the heavens and the earth, and then created man, the heavens and the earth at the time where God dwelt were one. Having been cast out from heaven, the devil Satan separated man from God by bringing sin to the earth. Since then, heaven and earth no longer were one, and the earth fell into the hands of Satan. So God planned what he would do for 6,000 years in order to reunite heaven and earth. During these 6,000 years, everyone born on earth could not become one with God, but rather were born as one with the devil Satan. Jesus, who appeared on this earth, knew this and made a very important statement. 
He gave very brief remarks about the process of reunifying heaven and earth through him. Also, he referred the devil Satan as a thief. John 10, verse 10, he said this, The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. God called Abraham in order to send Jesus Christ into the world and said that in him all nations would be blessed. And he also gave Abraham's grandson Jacob a new name and called him Israel and chose his twelve sons as a tribal nation. According to the Abrahamic covenant, all the land from the river of Egypt to the great river Euphrates was given as an inheritance. God granted the promised land of Canaan and said that God himself was married unto them and became one flesh with them in order to reunite heaven and earth through them. However, as the nation of Israel continued to commit fornication with the Gentiles, God made a decision and he said this, Jeremiah 3 verse 8, And I saw when for all the causes whereby backsliding Israel committed adultery, I had put her away and given her a bill of divorce. Yet her treacherous sister Judah feared not, but went and played the harlot also. The people of Israel were not only forsaken by God for committing adultery with the Gentile nations, but they were also forsaken by those nations who they were committing adultery with. They had become a nomadic nation wandering around the world. Jesus came to the world as a descendant of Abraham, and God planned to reconcile the world by accepting his only begotten son as a sacrifice. However, the Jews of Israel were committing adultery with the Romans who were ruling them at the time and killed their Messiah, Jesus Christ. God wanted to take away the sin of the world through the death and blood shed by Jesus. But the Jews rejected him to the end. However, to those who received the Son, he gave the power to become the sons of God. Even though the people of Israel left God, he still plans to save them so that they would return to the Lord during the Great Tribulation period, the time of Jacob's trouble. The prophet Hosea foretold what would take place on that day. I will go and return to my place till they acknowledge their offense and seek my face. In their affliction they will seek me early. Come, and let us return unto the Lord, for he hath torn, and he will heal us. He hath smitten, and he will bind us up. After two days will he receive us, will he revive us. In the third day he will raise us up, and we shall live in his sight. Hosea 5, 15 through 6, verse 2. So when they repent before the Lord Jesus Christ and receive him, they shall then enter the millennial kingdom, which is the third day of God, and live in his presence. Through his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, God will finally cast out the thief Satan, the devil, and restore heaven and earth to be one again through the nation of Israel and the church of God. Repentance and believing in the Lord Jesus Christ is the indescribable glory of obeying God's will to restore the heavens and the earth in order to become one body with the Lord Jesus Christ. Solomon's bride, the Shulamite, is the type of Christian who forsakes the devil Satan to receive the Lord Jesus Christ, who gives life 
and provides abundantly to the sheep. In the text given to us today, it shows us a Christian spiritually separated from Christ for a while, where fellowship has stopped, and later on repents and serves him once again. When Solomon called the Shilamite to leave with them, she hesitated and she said this in Solomon, Song of Solomon chapter 2, Until the day break and the shadows flee away, turn, my beloved. But this time in chapter 4 verse 6, we see her confessing that she wants to go with them now. Until the day break and the shadows flee away, I will get me to the mountains, mountain of mirror and to the hill of frankincense. This is a confession where a Christian will take up the cross as bitter as myrrh and follow Christ while praying without ceasing after fellowship with the Lord is restored. The confession of going up to the mountains is a decision to live one step higher spiritually from now on. At this time, Solomon praises the Shulamite. It is also the voice of the Lord towards the Christians who want to be more mature spiritually. Thou art all fair, my love. There is no spot in thee. Song of Solomon 4 verse 7 Solomon tells her to come out, out of Lebanon and look from the summit of Amana, from the summits of Shinar and Hermon, and from the lion's dens, from the mountains of the leopards. When we reach a spiritually high point, as the Apostle Paul testified, there lies principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of this world, an evil spirit. The lion and the leopard witnessed here are spiritual warfare against the devil and the Antichrist. Apostles Peter and John said these things. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion walketh about, seeking whom he may devour, 1 Peter 5, verse 8. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were also, his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power, and his seat and great authority, Revelation 13, verse 2. It's not a coincidence how that new statue they put up in front of United Nations recently. It sounds a lot like the beast shown in Revelation 13. Solomon says that the Shulamite stole his heart only with one of her eyes and one chain around her neck. Moreover, he says that the Shulamite whom he loves is much better than the wine and that her fragrance is better than any perfumed oil. Now she may be poor, broken and seem worthless to the world, but in the eyes of the Lord, his bride, the church of God who has been redeemed through his blood and has been sanctified is the most beautiful thing in the whole wide world. Solomon praises his bride, the Shulamite, how that her lips flow like honey from a beehive, and honey and milk are under her tongue, and her clothes have the scent of Lebanon. Now concerning honey, King David confessed this, How sweet are thy words unto my taste, yea, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Psalm 119 verse 103 
And in 1 Peter 2 verse 2, Apostle Peter testified of milk. As newborn babes, desire the sincere milk of the word, that ye may grow thereby. The Lord praises his bride, the Christians, for their yearning for the word of God, keeping the words under their tongue, and also testifying the word. Solomon speaks of the Shilamite as a locked garden, a closed well, and a sealed ring, and a sealed spring. His testimonies are repeated three different times. The Lord gave the Holy Spirit to his own bride and sealed it so that no one could take it away. In whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Ephesians 1 verse 13 Solomon now speaks about the beautiful fruits of the Shilamite's trees, the pomegranate, camphor with spikenard, spikenard and saffron, calamus and cinnamon, frankincense, myrrh and aloe, and all precious spices. And there are also streams flowing out of Lebanon. The Holy Spirit given by the Lord enables Christians to live and bear fruit. Not only this, but the water of life flows out from the belly when preaching the gospel so that many souls may be brought to eternal life. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. Galatians 5, 22 and 23 In the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and, stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. John 7, verse 37 and 38 Apostle John closes Revelation by saying, Amen, even so, come Lord Jesus. Just as Isaac went out to meditate in the field at the evening, waiting for his bride Rebekah, and taking her in to be his wife as she arrived unto him, our Lord Jesus is waiting for the arrival of of his bride at the open gate of heaven. Jesus will return soon. He will come for his church first, the chaste bride of Christ, before he allows the great tribulation to start on earth. He will then return on his second coming with the church to destroy the unbelieving world. He will then set up and rule his millennial kingdom here on earth. He invites everyone to escape the coming wrath and be with God the Father. Admit you're a sinner for not believing in the blood shed by Jesus. Repent and believe in this gospel how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. You must repent and believe the gospel with all your heart. Pray for wisdom and understanding of the Holy Bible as you study, and let Jesus lead you in truth and spirit. Jesus is waiting for you even today. The day of salvation is now and today. God bless and have a wonderful day.